Hello everyone, it's Lindenherz. Yeah, long time ago I promised you how to make your own ink. And uh, if you saw my uh, Ostara video, uh, then you know that I already prepared some elder ink and I want to, want to share with you the process. Um, this is um, a recipe that was not uh, originally mine. Um, I found it through the um, uh, through Instagram uh, by a gorgeous soul there called Wurzel Weber. Uh, she's a German blogger and um, she only writes her blog in German, but her Instagram is uh, quite often also in English. I will link both uh, uh, both the blog and also the, her Instagram below. Uh, maybe some of you are able to understand German and have fun with her blog. Um, yeah. And uh, she did this a couple of months ago, and I thought, okay, I, this is so cool. I know there is an elder tree here or nearby. I just want to try that out. And she shared her recipe with me, and yeah, um, it's quite easy. And uh, I, like I told you, I found an elder tree by the end of the street. We have one big here. But... Um, it was not so easy to get um, all of the cones because it was such a big tree. Um, normally uh, around this time of year a lot of these elder cones are falling off the tree because the twigs are where the elder cones, I say cones, are um, um, attached to uh, are quite dry. So everything, when, when a strong wind ca uh, is coming then uh, every uh, elder cone is uh, a lot of elder cones are uh, blown from the or off the of the tree, and then they lay on the street. But it's not so easy because when elder cones come in contact with a lot of water, they start to uh, develop some fungi. So this is something I say uh, to you when you find an elder tree. Hopefully, you will find a smaller one where you can reach the branches and uh, twigs, and uh, you can harvest the elder cones from there. So. I want to share with you some of those cones, these here. This is a good little batch of cones. Um, these aren't actually, like I told you, these aren't actually cones. This is why I said cones. These are actually fruit because um, the elder tree is not a pine tree or something around that line. Uh, it's a leaf tree and it's uh, related to uh, uh, not related it's a relative of the birch tree also and whoop <laughs> it fall off um it's um it is a tree that um that is also that finds its way into mythology here in uh, germany the old germany people believed this tree was not necessarily an evil tree but um because this is because um, uh, these trees are normally growing um, in wet ground. So you find them near streams or ponds or something around that line. You um, also find them in swamps and in moors. So uh, <laughs> um, moors were traditionally uh, the, the place of the dead for the old Germanic people. And wanderers were especially fearful um, uh, because of uh, an evil spirit that was a female evil spirit that was related to the elder tree or how we call it in German uh, Erle and they were fearful of the Erlen vibe or also uh, she was also called Ella or Else or uh, Irle or Else it was also the name of the Erlen vibe which is not, nothing more than uh, yeah elder wife or how to put it, um, an elder woman. And it was said that these uh, spirits uh, lure wanderers into the swamps. So not the best reputation. And this reputation also didn't change uh, in the Mid Middle Ages. Uh, with Christianity, it got even worse because the tree was related to witches and to the devil. Uh, but um, it was also interesting because uh, twigs of these trees uh, were also used to prevent some yeah, bad things. So like cursing or something like, like that or uh, protecting against evil spirits. This was also quite interesting. Um, 
the also another cool fact about the elder tree is that the because the elder connects earth and water uh, the wood of the elder tree um, doesn't rot in water so um, elder trees um, or the wood of elder trees were used for uh, stilt houses basically and, and this was quite interesting to to learn um, that a good part of Venice is actually built on elder wood. This was uh, quite interesting to, to hear. And um, I also found uh, something out uh, in terms of my hometown here. Here in Hanover, we have the largest city forest. Um, uh, it was uh, fascinating to learn that this uh, city forest is actually bigger than Central Park. <laughs> that was something I didn't expect. So um, this city forest is called Eilenriede. And I thought, why, why, what, what is, does that word mean? And Eile um, is also related to the German word Erle, so elder. And um, Riede means something like a swamp area or a moor area. So swampy, wet ground. Um, and it was a place where a lot of elder trees were growing. Nowadays, it's not so wet anymore and a lot of um, beaches are growing there. Um, but it was an interesting fact uh, to learn about that and how these, these names are related and how they change during the centuries. This was quite, um, quite interesting. And also the elder tree, before I forget, in terms not only for the Germanic people, but also for the Celts, it was a holy plant, especially for Druids. So a special, a special tree. And it's also the bark of this tree is also good for um, when you have a cold or coughing or something like that. It's really helpful. So, um, but what I will share with you is how to gain some color from these cones. And uh, first of all, you have to remove those twigs here. Um, when you found, um, um, yeah, an elder tree uh, where you live or when you come by, these twigs are normally easy to break off. off. Um, they are quite dry. Normally, uh, yeah, a strong wind can blow them on the ground. But like I told you, don't necessarily pick them from the ground because you don't know how many, how much um, moisture they um, took in or they absorb. Uh, so you don't want to have fungi in your ink. So this is a good way. So, um, but they are quite easy to, um, to remove from the twigs. But what you can do with the twigs is look at that, what I did uh, still will make it bigger. You can make this little kind of, um, yeah, pile and do your own little bonfire with it uh, or bonfire with it, not bonfire. Bonfire is the, is the tarot. <laughs> you can uh, do your own bonfire with it. Um, I put some, um, yeah, um, some things, uh, some sand or stones uh, on the ground so uh, the plate uh, doesn't get affected. But I guess you can use this quite good when you want to uh, maybe in a spell, you want to release something, you write something on paper, some things you want to release from your life, and you put this into this little, in this little, uh, uh, yeah, wood pile and uh, burn this back, actually. This is quite a thing, quite a cool thing to do with the, the rest of this, this little wood, um, this little, yeah, the little twigs. So, um, I guess it was enough of rambling. Did I forget anything? Um, I will share with you some of the paper before we will. Um, I will share with you the recipe. So this is something you can get out of this. Um, I, used, um, I used a sponge for that and I will share with you the process how to do this um, after I share, shared with you how to make this ink. And there's another one, this is a page I will share with you uh, at the end of this video. And this is one I did this very morning. And you see, um, it's, quite, it's quite flat and it doesn't bend so much. Here it bends a bit. So it's good when you press it a bit so you get flat paper. But this is really uh, gorgeous to, um, yeah, when you want to make your own book of shadows or you want to make some interesting drawing paper. This is actually just simply uh, normal uh, copy paper or uh, printing paper. 
Um, I also want to use uh, more art paper in the future, we'll see. Um, but it's, it's, since see, when I share with you how to do this, you can get interesting, <laughs> interesting shades with this. Um, I found out that I guess I will use this more for, um, for dyeing paper. Um, I don't know if I will use it so much for, um, writing on it. Um, this ink, um, is quite interesting in terms when you're writing because um, this is something I will share with you at the end uh, of the video so I won't uh, uh, talk about that any longer but I will share with what I I will write or, or I already have written with this ink this is a glass quill and um, I found this quite helpful um, to dip into the ink what I can't say to you and this is also something that will be will i repeat in the at the end of the video i don't know how long this um ink will add, will last so this is something i have to find out for myself you have to find out for yourself and for those of you who are not living in an area where elders are growing i guess you can find out easily uh, on the internet uh, what kind of plants you can find or uh, are available around your area that were traditionally used to yeah, dye wool, for instance, also paper uh, or other stuff, maybe also wood. I know that elder, um, the bark of the elder ink was also used to gain some color and uh, um, paint or dye, actually dye some uh, leather with it. So versatile, uh, versatile uh, things you can do with this one and also with other kinds of plant colors. And I'm quite, uh, interested to find out um, more about that and see what kind of uh, colors uh, the plant world will uh, could provide you uh, pr provide me and you with so enough ramble you will see what i mean now uh, 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 or what i did with these, these here i will provide you with the recipe and i hope you will have a lot of fun trying this for yourself uh, it's super easy it's super, super, super easy. And from a little batch of pine cones, a little bit more, uh, you can get a lot of color, a lot, lot of color. So uh, you can use them, you can easily use them twice or f yeah, a third time, a fourth time. Uh, I used, uh, I did them, uh, I cooked them for 30 minutes. This is enough. You can do it much, much longer, up to several hours. Depends on how dark you want to color your color to be, but this is something you can try out. It's easy. You, I think you can't make any mistakes with it. Uh, so try it and let me know what you think about it. And now enjoy the process, this little slideshow, and we'll see us at the end of the video. dye paper with this ink actually um, this is the amount of ink I have right now and I use this kind of sponge and as you can see it's already heavily used and um, what I'm doing basically is before I will start to do this surface I will cover this and what you see here is a is a picture frame sorry for the noise it's in the middle of the morning <laughs> so um, I will um, cover this one here with the color or with the ink actually so as you can see it's a quite windy day I hope you can can hear me not only the wind 
<laughs> so I cover this, oh, some dog hair, <laughs> with this one to remove this here a bit. So can, you can uh, do some amount of ink on the glass plate here. So like I said, picture frame with glass on it. So and then you press this on. As you can see, some already come on. <laughs> but what you're doing here is now putting it, putting this color on the paper sheet. And this is just ordinary printing paper. And you can do this in slight, in a, a no, I mean in light colors, but I usually like darker colors. And something that you can also do is these kind of things here. But I will turn the paper over because I'm quite sure the other side didn't get enough ink. Yeah, a lot of a lot of traffic here in my street. So I will turn the paper like this. And it's quite okay. This equally amount of of color on this paper, but the more you put on this paper, the darker gets. So you can you don't uh, uh, have to use a sponge. You can also use some kind of fabric or so, uh, or try to achieve with the fabric when you crinkle it some kind of um, yeah. Uh, different kinds of uh, style. I'm normally doing this like this one here and then when it's um, when it's already dried a bit I put some more color or some more ink on it so the paper can absorb even more. And you can get, uh, you can achieve all sorts of antique finished look uh, with these papers. So, so let's put here something. In. I missed here something. So this now will dry in the sun. This can be quite quick. Um, this is um, a quicker process than with. Um, with black tea. I have to say I tried it with black tea in this kind of method and it, this takes really forever and um, this one here is the quickest method and as I told you the um, amount of ink that you can get from this bunch of uh, or this batch of of elder cones is uh, quite amazing so I guess I will stick with this one. I know where I have my resources for elder cones so um, I will dye those papers, these big sheets of papers, in uh, in this kind of way. So I will come back when this paper is dried. So as you can see now, everything dried, and this is the effect that you have when you remove it from the from the glass. A bit careful about that, and then you have it, and the. It's really good that uh, with this method you have a quite a flat paper, otherwise it would crinkle all over. This one is quite, um, yeah, it's uh, it's a finish which is quite, um, yeah, you see, it's uh, equally colored. So if you want to achieve another effect, you just have to put another layer on it. Maybe just try to... Um, do the the edges of the of the one you see an interesting effect here uh, from the sponge something uh, from the sponge fell off and yeah laid down there so let's see on the back let's see it's a bit different most of the time which is quite interesting the backs are you see this kind of uh, glossy I don't know why because maybe because I removed it and it was so uh, tightly pressed on the uh, on the uh, on the glass but you see it already starts to yeah you see it's bending what you can do with this one is put it on mm, or under some books maybe I have a press so it's more easy with this one 
for me, but uh, I guess I will give it a go and do another layer because I like the paper quite dark. So I will do another one. So press it down like this. Try to remove the air bubbles, but you don't necessarily have to, because sometimes the crinkles here, uh, yeah, they cause quite uh, nice effects on the paper. So you can leave it. So I will only do the edges this time, I guess. So see that I get everything here covered so see here will be there there will be some crinkles in it but as I said this could be quite interesting to see on the paper so yeah so you have seen now uh, what you can do with uh, elder ink of course you can also write and I will try to uh, make some pictures of some writings at the end and um, uh, what I have to say is when you write with this ink it's like I said water-based and um, it's quite interesting and funny uh, that sometimes when the ink is for a while in a bottle like this one here that um, you have to you have to shake it and um, sometimes, I don't know uh, why this is, but sometimes you get different kinds of colorations when you write. So from light brown to really an intense red brown, almost blood-like. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting when you see a written letter with this ink. This is uh, so not every sentence is another color or every word is another color every time you dip your, your quill um, in the... Um, in the ink actually. Um, for this one here I'm using a glass pen which I will show you at the end in a photo. Um, not a glass pen, yeah, you could say it, it's a glass pen um, which you can dip uh, dip in the ink and then write. Um, this is, um, I also tried with uh, metal uh, quilts but um, I don't like them. Actually it's a bit difficult. I don't have a fountain pen so I can only say you can try it. I don't know if this makes any damage to your fountain pen. I don't think so, actually, but beware. <laughs> and what I also don't know at the moment is how long this ink is lasting. Um, I will see how uh, long I can keep it in a in a yeah in a bottle, um, and then I will let you know, or you just have to find it out for yourself. So. I hope you had lots of fun uh, and you will have lots of fun doing this for yourself uh, when you are in a yeah area where you have elder trees and um, yeah just try it let me know what you think uh, let me know uh, how you liked it how you like the color and um, yeah um, now enjoy this little slideshow at the end where I show you how this ink is looking when you write on this paper here actually so i wish you a wonderful day or a peaceful night many blessings bye